Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is a patient who we are told has protein S deficiency. Okay. Actually, interestingly, I believe that the S stands for Seattle. <laughs> we'll look that up. Look that up. All right. Let's I'll, see if that's true. Okay. Now, um, uh, protein S deficiency is a situation that is associated with an increased chance of clotting. And if you look at it statistically over time, since people are born with it, the chances of their having a clot is way over 50% lifetime. It's very, very high. What is protein S? Okay. The coagulation system is um, a series of chemical reactions that lead to the formation of a clot. Now, clots are always combined to both a gel called fibrin and also platelets, but we, we're going to separate those. If you just take blood and separate out the top part called plasma the pl and just leave it alone, the plasma will eventually form a gel, and that gel is formed from a, a protein called fibrin. Fibrin Fibrin is made from something that's circulating in the blood in pretty high concentration called fibrinogen. Okay. Fibrin is converted to fibrin primarily by an enzyme called thrombin. Thrombin. Now, it, it, we also have numbers for all of the coagulation factors. And the numbers really correlate with how much there is. So the lower the number, the more there is. So the, factor one is fibrinogen which is converted to factor one activated, which is fibrin, which is the clot. Factor two, factor two is prothrombin that becomes two activated, which is thrombin. Okay. Now thrombin is a very, it's fascinating. I know, I'm getting to protein S, I know. But thrombin is very interesting because thrombin <coughs> does the following things. We, it, it, and probably more. But the things that we know it does in terms of clotting is it, it creates the clot, it turns fibrinogen to fibrin, and then it also creates, it also converts something called plasminogen to plasmin, and plasmin breaks down the clot. So it makes the clot and it breaks down the clot. In addition, it converts protein C, it activates protein C from protein C to activated protein C, protein C little a, and it converts protein S, we're there, to protein S activated. So so whenever you form a clot, you also start breaking down the clot, and you also start turning off the clotting mechanism because this combination of protein C and protein S together feed back and turn off clotting at, by breaking down uh, factor five, factor five, like in factor five Leiden, yes, factor five, <laughs> and factor eight. They break those down. So, so uh, when they're activated. So in other words, protein S is ultimately involved as a feedback turn off control valve for clotting. And if you don't have enough, this now up until now I've been telling you the facts, now I'm gonna tell you my opinion. If you don't have enough, what happens is that when you activate the clotting system, it doesn't turn off well enough. It gets, so that it increases the chance of clotting. Ah, now, Actually, protein C and protein S are chemically and genetically related to the actual clotting factors. Factors 2, 7, 9, 10, protein C, protein S are all cousins. Why did I pick 2, 7, 9, and 10? Because all of those have to be modified by an enzyme that depends upon vitamin K and things that depend on vitamin K are turned off by Coumadin or Warfarin. It's similarly, protein C and protein S are turned off, not turned off, they, can, they, they cannot assume their final form. They require vitamin K in order, to, in order to become complete, and so they do not become complete if a patient takes Coumadin. The treatment for protein S deficiency is lifelong Coumadin. So if you have a person on lifelong Coumadin, 
You can't diagnose that protein S deficiency because the protein S is turned off by the Coumadin. It also leads to one final problem that I want to talk about, which is it's hard to start and maybe stop Coumadin in people who are protein C and S deficient. Why? Because the, all the coagulation, the coagulation works perfectly at 50% and doesn't work at 25%. So these people start off with 100% of factor 2 and 100% of factor 7, 100% of factor 9, 100% of factor 10, 100% of protein C, and 50% of protein S. You give them Coumadin the first day, they have 50% of everything else and 25% of factor S. They've just become a lot more coagulable. They can develop something called Coumadin-induced skin necrosis, where the hypercoagulability is so high that the, that, that the skin, that clots form under the skin and the skin dies. Cut.